This week, state lawmakers were informed that the current state budget will come up 60, $69 million short, and projections for the next fiscal year are also under current planned state spending. Now, the budget will be a key issue when lawmakers convene for the next 60-day session in January. Our line opinion panelists are ready to weigh in on what's ahead. I'm joined this week by Daniel Foley, former New Mexico House Minority Whip, former State Representative Janice Arnold-Jones is here, Sophie <laughs> Martin, attorney and editor of DukeCityFix.com, and our friend, former State Senator Eric Riego. Now, Daniel, like I have so many former lawmakers here this week, Sophie, don't feel left out. You're going to get your bits here for sure. She may know more about the budget than that's true. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. She could, she could totally <laughs> plead like I had nothing to do with this structural deficit. I'm the, I'm the like only one panel, who's not to blame. Right. That is for sure. What I like about this panel, however, is you guys have all individually weighed in on this budget as we've gone along in the last year and a half or so. This, so this is good. So, Dan, starting with you. If you were in the House right now, what would you be banging on the table about right now? What would you be pounding your fist on the table about right now? So, you know, I think the first thing that I would be doing, and we've talked about this here before, I am adamantly opposed to the 10% across the board cuts. That's right. I think you take the opportunity to say, that has been, that has not worked. We're cutting that program 100%. That has worked. We're going to make sure it maintains the funding. I think this is an, a, a unique opportunity uh, for the legislature and the leadership to look at what is working, right. make sure that stays getting funding. What isn't working gets cut. It's not gonna happen that way. They're mm -hmm. gonna settle on an across the board cut. Um, I don't even know if they'll get it done because I think there's gonna be an unbelievable gap between the leadership in the House and Senate that's now both being controlled by the Democrats mm -hmm. and the governor's office. And you know, the governor's not running for anything. Right. So she's not up for reelection. So I don't see her waffling or cratering on any of her positions. Um, I think that there's going to be an interesting push afoot because you have members of the, especially in the House, the Democrat leadership, the early childhood development, they've been huge proponents of that. Mm -hmm. They want to put more money into that. Mm -hmm. so, some would say they don't, they don't have any money in it. Sure. They want to continue to do that. Um, and so it's going to be a tough battle, I think, going into this session. But for me, it would be what works, fund it, what doesn't work, right. cut it. I want to come back to some of your stuff you mentioned. Janice, same question. If you were back in the House, what would you be talking about with leadership right now? Well, I, I, I would be closely mimicking what uh, Representative Foley said. Mm -hmm. it, it, this is a remarkable opportunity if you are an advocate of smaller government. Right. This is it. This is it, but you gotta ask the right questions. And there needs to be leadership from the top. And the only place we can cut in state government is through our agencies. So there are agencies mm -hmm. that need to look at what they're doing. And if they have things stacking up that they haven't touched for four to six months, start there. Mm -hmm. Because the key to making it smaller is also to tell people what you expect. Mm -hmm. And so are there things that really are useless for people to engage in government with? Yes, sucks their time, sucks their money, mm -hmm. but we're not getting anything and the agencies can't get to it. There are very clear markers for reducing because here's the sad thing. I don't believe there's going to be any new money, which is what Senator Smith is calling for. Right. And further, I believe by the time we get to January, you're going to see an overall 7% reduction over what we've just looked at. Wow. And, and so where do you go? Yeah. Where do you go? So it is time to say, you know what? We really aren't looking at that piece of paper that we require Eric Griego to submit just to keep his business going. Uh, and so we need to go to the legislature and repeal that stuff. Mm, interesting. I want to come back to some of that stuff too. Eric, you know, uh, there's a fine line, of course, and we're seeing this already between uh, cutting because of budget considerations and getting services made to folks who expect them and need them and pay for them, frankly. Where's that line? If, if, Beck, if you were in the Senate, what would you be talking about Senate leadership about that issue? How do we cut responsibly? and not hurt New Mexicans. Well, I'm, I disagree with the, with the premise on cutting because we, we cut and we cut and we cut and we have the worst outcomes for kids. Um, we have the, as we've talked about it, nauseam, we have the largest, one of the largest permanent funds, yet it's still sacrosanct. So it doesn't matter what we decide to use that for. The, fa the fact that, that a family would sit on a massive savings account while their children are starving, while their elders are not being taken care of, while they don't have health insurance, while they're having these dismal outcomes, it's just absurd. It's just, it's so, so what, I just. What, go ahead, sorry. No, so I was going to say that, so revenue, 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 right? right. So, um, so that's one idea. If, if, if people can't live with that, the nice thing about that is the governor cannot veto that. So I think uh, if this new Democratic legislature has uh, a spine to do this, they're going to make that happen, right. whether it's early childhood or expanding uh, 
funding for schools, something to get some additional revenue. And then secondly, I sponsor that internet uh, sales tax. There's no reason why we should be letting out of state, very, very wealthy companies not have to pay sales tax. And um, I got it through, I got it to the floor and mm -hmm. it was killed by, by the way, by both Democrats and Republicans. So if we want to help small businesses, it's not generating much, but there are about 15 other revenue proposals like that, including legalizing and taxing marijuana, internet, internet tax, closing the capital gains uh, tax, loophole for the wealthiest folks, repealing uh, lots and lots of corporate tax cuts that we've given away. So if we have the political will, we can raise the revenue and stop this conversation being a one-sided conversation about cut, 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 cut. Interesting. Cut. Well, you got a full plate there, Sophie, after all three of these guys weighed in. How, you know, this idea of the, of the new team coming in, go to something that uh, Dan brought up. <laughs> the, de the Democrats, Democrats coming in. Yeah. There's a different approach, it seems to me, when you have a, a new wave of leadership coming in. Sometimes folks can go for the gusto, almost like a shock and awe kind of a thing, just pile it on. And then some others, sometimes you see folks just sort of feeling their way along. What's your prediction how so, Democrats so my would sense approach is that this? this? Is, this is a, an experienced group that mm -hmm. they've had enough time out in the wilderness um, to to kick around what they what they think is necessary to improve things in New Mexico. I mean, just to build on what what Eric was saying, you know, mm -hmm. we're we have the second worst unemployment rate in the country after Alaska. Right. So finally, Mississippi, by the way, rises <laughs> above. Good, to, good for them. Um, but this is the definition of insanity here: trying to cut our way constantly, cut the number of. Uh, we're continuing this to cut the number of government employees. We have known for decades that government was a huge economic engine here in New Mexico, and there's been, you know, people saying, "Oh, that's a terrible thing. That's a positive thing." But the truth is, we don't see industry taking up the slack in terms of those government jobs. And That's we right. need New Mexicans to be working, to be earning decent incomes, to be spending that money in the local market. If they're gonna spend it on Amazon, that I agree that those purchases need to be taxed. Um, and what we're seeing with the way government is conducted right now is a push to higher unemployment, a push to lower incomes, um, and that, I think, is one of the big reasons we're spiraling toward the bottom. We have said around this table, or I at least have, have said a lot around this table for a long time, you can't always count on oil and gas. Um, we, we have finally seen that to our terrible detriment. Mm -hmm. um, and this being what I would consider a pretty desperate time, it is discouraging to see our governor so doctrinaire, so unwilling to move in any way on the idea of revenue, on the idea of taxes. Mm -hmm. Things are bad. Everyone needs to be creative, and that includes Governor Martinez. Janice, pick up on the revenue uh, idea. What's your thought on revenue? Eric laid out a couple different proposals. We hear on the internet thing, there's the idea that there'll be suits and pushback and all that kind of thing. We can get through that, can't we? I mean, I, I would think that if we have a goal to do that, we can make that happen somehow. Uh, well, I, I think so. So there, there are several ways because, unfortunately, it's a two-edged sword. As you raise revenue, if you're only uh, target for raising revenue is your own people. Right. So now they have less money because you've increased their taxes, which means that they cannot spend as much because the taxes are going to the government. So sure. there is a balance that you have to get to. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so what are the things, I mean, I think what we're all saying is that going down the road of let's cut another 5% across the board, that is not acceptable because there are real issues in this state. Mm -hmm. And we have to make some choices, <laughs> focus on our priorities, and we may have to let a little bit go. I'm not saying that there's not room to raise some revenue. Uh, there, there is. Mm -hmm. um, are you comfortable with a gas tax, for I, example? You know, I don't, I don't like it, yeah. but it's probably an easy one to go. But again, anytime you raise taxes in this environment, anybody who is depending on gasoline to get to work, who is right. really on a tight budget, it hurts. That, that it makes just sense. Hurts. There's a problem is we, we ha, you know we have these two discussions that are going on and we have on one hand and, and Janice I think just just pointed out, this out really nicely. Um, there are people in New Mexico who really are hand to mouth. Mm -hmm. An increase in the gas cost um, could be the difference between being able to get to work, get their kids to school, etc. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we have people who are doing extremely well, and we refuse to increase taxes on them because that would be anti-competitive. Well. It's got to be one or the other, right? Or maybe a little of both. But, but we can't continue, I believe, we can't continue to look at millionaires and say, you know what, we, we can't possibly touch that money. We hope that you will invest in our state. When we know the <coughs> truth is, that doesn't necessarily happen. Mm -hmm. When you have a big, I mean, to the, to the point Eric made before, when you have a big chunk of savings, you've got money that you're not circulating in the market, it doesn't advantage New Mexico 
if we're not taxing that money, and, and a number of people have said, yeah, go ahead and, and raise my taxes. We've seen that nationally. Mm -hmm. If we're not taxing that money, we're forced to look at things like gasoline tax, food tax, tax on medications, things that so very much hurt uh, mm -hmm. our poorest here in New Mexico. You know, Daniel, the hold harmless uh, scheme, <laughs> I like yeah. that reaction, Janice, <laughs> is ending, and, and it almost seems like we're just booting a problem down the road down to the local folks now, and they're going to have to deal with it. Do you predict, predict that local municipalities are going to go to some kind of revenue scheme themselves? Oh, yeah. No, they okay. Choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're going to do it now. So, yeah. so here's, here's the problem kind of in, in my view, listening to what everybody said. There's, mm -hmm. there's no doubt. Um, I mean, when you're the second highest state in unemployment, that means we don't have jobs. Right. So right. we don't have jobs. Taxing industries doesn't attract those jobs. Yeah. So I'm not saying we should be giving them all kinds of more tax cuts. That's not okay. what I'm advocating. Okay. I do think that you may see... Um, and I've been wrong before. I think you may see the legislature try to come with some sort of a borrowing option out of the permanent fund. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Coming in and saying, look, we want to take this chunk of money from the permanent fund, but you know, we're going to set a cap that, you know, that says, listen, if we take this money, anything above you know, this revenue and oil and gas revenue or right. this gross receipts tax automatically goes back to replenish that stuff. There was already some hint of that in uh, Senator Jonathan Smith talking about creating another new permanent fund right. uh, with the stuff that needs to go. Bec and the reason I think that may happen, Gene, is the constant conversation about we need money now. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, here's the deal. We've talked about this before. I, I, I don't want to put these guys on the spot, but, you know, our budgetary process in the <laughs> legislature, um, you know, it's one of where the Constitution says we have to have a balanced budget, sure. no ifs, ands, or buts. Sure. And I, I think Eric Janice would agree with me. We always backed into the number, right? right. Here's the amount of money we're going to spend in the budget. Now go tell DFA and tell the tax, the LSC guys, what's the price of oil and gas got to be? <laughs> And yeah, they come back and say, oh, the price of oil and gas got to be this. And we'd say, there we go, balanced budget. And, and, and nobody paid attention to that, right? We railed against that on the floor. We fought against that for years. And everybody just, it was just, it was too, you know, it was too mm -hmm. esoteric for people. Mm -hmm. um, but now the media has been paying attention to this budget crisis. I think you're going to have a hard time walking out in the legislature and saying, hey, we got a balanced budget. We're at $140 a barrel right. ga uh, oil right. and we're at, you know, $8 MCF for, for gas. Right. I think the media and everybody in the state's going to go, we haven't seen that in 35 years. So I think they're going to have a very difficult time coming up with a budget. And I think that's why you're hearing some of these words like we need now money right. is because they're going to have to figure out a way to, to gloss this over. And I think the only way they're going to be able to do that immediately, here's the deal, even if they raise a tax, they're not going to see that money for a year from now. That's right. So they, now money means now. And so I think you're going to see some sort of a loan process with the permanent fund created. And remember, we talk about what the Constitution says and what the law says. Remember, legislators get no money other than the, the per diem. But now we got retirement That's right. because the court said we could. Exactly. So whatever we put out there, you know, whatever comes out there, it could be enough of a crisis that when it gets to the courts, the courts are like, well, we're okay with that. We don't, right. we don't need a constitutional. That's right. Janice, 30 seconds back well, up on that. Two, two things. One, when you hit the permanent fund, don't forget that that money is dedicated to our our schools. Right. And so you will have a commensurate increase in taxes to support our school. There's no choice. However... But aren't we looking to take $120 million out of education? Well, I hope, you know, and I looked at that and I'm going, oh right. boy, oh boy. But the other side is, mm -hmm. is look at the legislature's record and hold their feet to the fire. We have two funds that are underfunded, and that's PERA and ERB. Right. And we had plans to make them solvent, and did it happen? No. Good point. We'll end it there.